This video is sponsored by Hoy Miles. Magnetic water pumps with no moving parts recently took the internet by storm with multi-million YouTube videos showing how to build one at home. These pumps work on the physical principles called magnetohydrodynamics or MHD for short. While most of these videos are actually fake, MHD as a technology isn't. And it's a real field of physics that we can use to not just make pumps, but also propulsion systems for ships and spacecraft, and even electrical power generators with no moving parts that work at a much higher efficiency than today's common power plant. Though this seems like the stuff of science fiction, it's a technology that's been around since the early 20th century. I'm talking about magnetohydrodynamics, or MKBHD, sorry, no, um, MHD, the buzzing field of physics research that promises anything from innovative thrusters for spacecraft and bladeless water pumps to a way to increase current power plant efficiency by over 50% and more than double the efficiency of PV solar. This technology has been in the works for decades, but its time may finally have come. Okay, so let's start with the basics and how it all works. Magneto refers to magnets, obviously. Hydro refers to fluids, and dynamics refers to the forces of motion. So MHD refers to using magnetism or electromagnetic forces to move fluids like water. Now this may sound a bit odd. I mean, we've all played with magnets and I doubt any of you have ever seen water or any other common fluid pulled or pushed by a magnet, right? Well, that's because water itself isn't a magnetic material. This is where motion comes in. Even though water isn't magnetic, there's still a way to make it move with a magnetic field. Field, and it's all based on electromagnetic induction and the Lorentz force. This is the same principle that makes electric motors work. I promise I won't get too nitty gritty on this one, but in essence, the Lorentz force is the force that charged particle feels when it moves through a magnetic field. So let's suppose we get a magnet on top and another one below a pool of conductive fluid and two electrodes with opposite charges on the side. Since the liquid is conductive, there will be an electrical current moving horizontally between the sidewalls. Now we have both things we need for the Lorentz force to act, a magnetic field and the moving charges. This will generate a force that pushes the liquid along the pool because the Lorentz force is perpendicular to both the magnetic field and the movement of the charged particles. So the gist of MHD is to apply both a magnetic field and an electric field. What all this means is that it's possible to build an MHD pump given a strong enough magnet and a high enough current. The awesome thing about it is that it works without any moving parts. This alone gives these pumps many advantages. They're very simple and compact and we can make them in any size we want from nanoscale to industrial scale. They're completely silent. No moving parts means these pumps can work at much higher temperatures than normal pumps since you don't need to worry about material resistance at higher temperatures. They're more reliable, high efficiency because they convert electrical energy into fluid motion directly with no propellers or compressors or anything else. They need minimal maintenance and they have the potential for a high power density. We need very high magnetic fields, so we need to use superconductor technology, which isn't cheap, but there is a really interesting new breakthrough. We'll put links down below. You're not going to want to miss. There are other issues with flow instabilities in some cases, and overall physics is very complex and it makes predicting how these pumps will work rather difficult. These cons make these pumps impractical for our pools or home water systems. However, there are many industrial applications that are a perfect fit. For example, we can use them to pump molten metals thousands of degrees in temperature. Remember that video we made several months ago about the solar cells that don't run on sunshine? Well, that system needed to pump molten tin at over 2000 degrees Celsius. An MHD pump would have been a way cleaner solution than the actual system that the researchers used. Other use cases include pumping molten salts or coolants in molten salt nuclear reactors and even microscale pumps for lab on chip applications. Really amazing stuff. Okay, now that we know how MHD pumps work, you should be able to see why those viral YouTube videos are a total scam. If you already know what it is, I encourage you to pause the video and leave a comment. Are you done? All right. So let's see if you got it right. You'll notice right away that the pumps on these viral videos are missing a key component of the system, the electrodes that generate the initial current inside the fluid. Without the current, there's no initial movement of charged particles and no Lorentz force to move the fluid. Oh, and then there's the fact that they're using fresh water, which is a horrible conductor of electricity, and they're using really weak electromagnets from a microwave transformer coil or an electric motor stator. The peak magnetic field strength in a residential microwave oven is around 9.2 times 10 to the negative 5 Teslas. That's 50,000 times weaker than what you would typically need for a good pump. So does that mean that MHD doesn't have a place in the world? 
Not at all. You won't believe the other amazing applications this technology has, especially in power generation. Now, real quick, let me tell you about our sponsor this week. One of my favorites, Hoymiles, the micro inverter company that I chose for my entire solar system. I went with Hoymiles because I'm a fan of the benefits of micro inverters. Things like panel by panel inverting, better performance with shade, no single point of failure, and longer service life. But the cherry on top is their value proposition. Their two to one, four in one, and even six to one inverters mean you can invert two, four, or six panels with one inverter, with all the benefits and significant savings. Here's my bill from April, before we had solar turned on. We used 1,287 kilowatt hours and that cost around $685. Now here's our bill from June with solar. The Hoy Miles app shows me I produced 1.37 megawatt hours. The house used 1,140. So my bill, negative 230 kilowatt hours. And here so far in July, we're on track for 1.8 megawatt hours. Pretty amazing. And saving $700 a month means I'll break even on my system in about three years. Years. I just love Hoy Miles so far, and they get a top recommendation from me. Check out Hoy Miles microinverters for your system. Links in the description. Huge thanks to Hoy Miles and you for supporting the show. Let's talk about propulsion. So if you know you can make a pump that moves a fluid through a fixed point, you can also fix the pump to an object and move the object through a fluid. Make it an MHD pump and you have an MHD propulsion system that has no moving parts. Imagine a boat that could glide along the water without a propeller of any kind or a motor making noise. Well, you won't have to because it's already been built. See, Mitsubishi Heavy Industries built the Yamato 1 prototype in 1991, which was powered by an MHD propulsion system. The system works just like an MHD pump with salt water as the conductive working fluid. The ship only reaches a speed of around 8 knots, 15 kilometers an hour, and was ultimately discarded for several reasons, the most important of which were the low efficiency of the drive, the very expensive and heavy liquid helium cooled superconducting electromagnets, and the fact that we need a massive diesel engine to produce the electrical power needed to run everything, sort of defeating the whole purpose. But MHD propulsion goes beyond boats on salt water. Any conductive fluid works with MHD, and that includes hot plasma, which is basically hot ionized gas. Since it's ionized, the gas is full of electrically charged particles, so it can conduct electricity. And this is where things start to get very interesting for MHD. First, we can actually generate plasmas by ionizing the air with high frequency, high voltage discharges, which combined with an MHD system that can push the ionized air in one direction, you can generate thrust in the opposite direction with no moving parts, just electricity. Many researchers have proposed this type of MHD drive thruster as an engineless propulsion system for aerospace craft with all sorts of futuristic shapes, including flying saucers. The Russians even built Ajax prototypes, which use several MHD generators to ionize and suck in vast amounts of rarefied air to run an air-fed ramjet at heights of over 200,000 feet, around three times higher than the best fighter jets. MHD propulsion is awesome and we should make an entire episode about it. If you'd want us to make that episode, sound off in the comments below. But I wanna talk more about something even better that could impact everyday people like you and me, MHD power generation. You know how we can use an electric motor in reverse and make it spin to get a generator? Well, we can do the exact same thing with an MHD propulsion system. If we take a conductive fluid and force it through a magnetic field, Faraday's law of induction will kick in and will generate electricity. Any conductive fluid works, but it's plasma that is the most promising. You see, one very easy way to produce plasma is through heat. When we burn natural gas, for example, the air in and around the flame gets ionized and it turns into a plasma. Run that stream of plasma through a magnetic field and it generates DC voltage directly. This is completely mind blowing because of the impressive increase in efficiency this would have. In a normal power plant, we burn fossil fuels to generate heat, then convert that heat into mechanical energy by spinning a turbine and then turn that mechanical energy into electrical energy using a generator and an alternator. It's complicated. Each energy conversion loses a little bit of efficiency and lowers the overall efficiency pretty significantly. Here we use hot plasma and magnets to turn thermal energy directly into electricity in one fell swoop. But that's not even the best part. Since there are no moving parts, we don't need to worry about material resistance at high temperatures. So while a normal gas fire turbine can run at a maximum temperature of around 1300 degrees Celsius, an MHD generator can run at a scorching 3000 degrees Celsius. So what gives? Well, here's the thing. All thermal machines have a limited maximum theoretical efficiency, which depends on the temperature difference between the hot source 
and the ambient temperature. That efficiency is given by the following equation. So the higher the hot temperature and the lower the cold temperature, the higher the overall efficiency. For a normal combined cycle gas power plant running around 1573 Kelvin and discharging the exhaust at 300 Kelvin, the maximum efficiency is around 0.809 or about 81%, which isn't too bad. In reality, due to all the losses and the energy conversions, you only get an efficiency of between 45 and 57 percent. But for an MHT generator working at 3273 Kelvin, the efficiency is around 0 0.908 or about 91 percent. And that 91 percent is actually the real world efficiency because there's no other energy conversions that need to happen downstream. But of course, there's always a trade-off and MHT generators aren't perfect, which is why we haven't really seen them built in any meaningful way. First, you don't get the full range of temperature difference with the MHD generator because once the temperature drops below roughly 1000 degrees Celsius, the air starts to lose its ionization and conductivity. There's also the problem of needing highly expensive and large superconducting magnets. And there are also some strong voltage drops due to other physical phenomena, which I'm not going to get into right now. But here's the thing. We actually have this video kind of ready to record and I kind of put it on the shelf until that room temperature ambient pressure superconductor research paper happened. And that's exactly the sort of thing that would completely shift the economics and change the game for a technology like this. I'm a huge advocate in do research in all sorts of different parallels and industries. Don't worry too much if you think one is better than the other. For example, everyone is pretty much on board with battery electric cars and they've poo-pooed hydrogen. But I, I believe that it makes sense to keep investing in hydrogen because maybe there's gonna be some other breakthrough that happens that shifts things. That's literally what's happening here. We're gonna do a follow-up video for that room temperature superconductor video when there's more labs that have verified this. But so far, there is some reason for optimism. And this MHD technology, is one of the first things that came to my mind that could be a complete game changer if that was true. The Yamato One, the ship built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries, was not really cost effective because they had to use liquid helium to keep the superconductor around four Kelvin. That is an incredibly difficult task and it uses a ton of energy. Same reason why quantum computers look so massive, the chip itself is that small, but you need this room size cooling mechanism to keep it at near absolute zero. With a room temperature superconductor, that will change all of that. This might actually be one of those things I could make for future space travel, power generators, all sorts of stuff. And that's why it's so freaking exciting and why I freaking love science and hopefully you do too. But that is a quick look at the MHD technology and why, yes, there have been some silly YouTube videos, but never let silliness or, you know, people trying to con you take away from the fact that there might be some truth to the underlying technology. And there's a perfect example of that. All right. Thank you so much for watching. If you thought this was cool, you got to watch that breakthrough on the room temperature superconductor next.